Hi, I'm Jason Gorber, and we're here to look at the SRS RA3000 speaker. Look, it comes in a really big box. Actually, it's not so big. Basically, what this is is a relatively high-end Bluetooth speaker that has some really interesting features that we sort of want to dig into. Uh, it comes in the sort of, like, slightly bigger than, uh, you know, maybe a big shoebox, one of those giant uh, basketball player shoeboxes. Um, it has some um, pretty cool features inside this box. You have a speaker, which is not the lightest thing in the world, but it absolutely sort of does the trick um, in terms of most audio applications. It's it's pretty handsome, um, sort of uh, gold uh, plasticky um, beam speakers. Uh, there's there's a, uh, a woofer driver inside. On top are uh, touch controls, um, play pause, volume up and down, and various selections from um, the inputs. Uh, music services, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a um, power plug on the back and I'm very happy to see a mini jack input um, as well as a link button. You can actually sort of have these set up to link to multiple speakers in the house using um, their system. There is an application that you can download, a Sony application that actually allows you to um, uh, tweak many of the settings. We'll get into some of that. But essentially what it is, is a powered, non-waterproof, Bluetooth speaker ideal for your kitchen counter or um, a bedroom or somewhere where you just sort of want to listen about uh, office, somewhere where you just kind of want to listen to music primarily um, as, as background music. Now, if we look at the back of the box, all nice pictures all here, it talks about some of the key features and the big one that they're promoting is this 360 reality audio. Now, I'm going to be a little bit of uh, sort of uh, give a little bit of pushback on that. This is something that's actually happened as by no means Sony. Many, many people are sort of uh, pushing towards this whole notion that from one speaker you can get many. And, and this goes back forever. If anybody remembers really old receivers, um, when they first came out, they had these modes like concert and sports and all that stuff that were built in to give this sort of sense of ambience, um, even from two speakers, a sort of a, a virtual way of doing that. Well, a lot of um, manufacturers are now doing that because people are sort of eschewing or getting rid of, you know, two speaker setups, proper stereo um, setups, and going with single speaker units, but they still want to get a sense of um, a room filling sound. And so you have built in abilities to actually make things sound bigger and sort of more um, uh, dispersed using equalization and stuff like that to actually have some um, particular sounds bounce off the walls, frankly, and give a more or add uh, types of reverb to actually um, create a more uh, wide space. Um, there are obviously separate drivers. These that you see, um, um, essentially a tweeter bay here and a tweeter bay here. Not a lot of space between the two. So even if you're sort of looking at it right here, this is, you can see it's, it's not as wide as my ears are. So you're basically getting um, straight um, in, in this direction, um, the, the sound of one speaker. But through uh, software, um, you, it, it attempts to give the semblance of this 360 audio and it makes all kinds of promises that it's going to fill your room. It's going to be like having the equivalent of something like an Atmos system, um, something that completely um, uh, becomes a multi-speaker uh, array. In fact, on um, certain um, streaming services, Tidal being one of them, uh, Amazon as well, there's actually 360 optimized tracks that you can play and this model is um, allows you to connect to it and you can play those tracks that have been specially designed in order to work on the 360 uh, speaker system. And I have to say, from my perspective, they're terrible. They sound bad. Basically what they're doing is they're taking the EQ of the original track and just completely bumping up the treble so much that it sounds so artificial and so like you're listening to an FM radio broadcast of another AM radio broadcast. It is, it is just, it, it's done for the purposes of sort of fooling you, I guess, into thinking that you're getting something out of nothing, which really, you know, when has that ever truly happened? The fact of the matter is, it's a shame because this is a good speaker. This sounds great when you just put normal sound on it and get out of it what you expect to get out of it, which is essentially sort of 
the equivalent of a mono speaker, you know, one place with pretty decent treble response, pretty decent bass response, um, good impact, not too boomy. If you play it, uh, it definitely cranks up in volume. It's not battery powered. It's not waterproof. It's none of that stuff. But in terms of just like putting it in there and having a good, good, um, functional Bluetooth speaker with pretty excellent sound, this is one to look at. If you get this because you think this is going to replace some 12 speaker 360 array, for me, it doesn't work at all on that front. And of course it doesn't. Um, there's only so much you're going to get out of this. And frankly, when I went back and forth between listening to the quote unquote regular stereo mix and something that's mixed for in 360 and Tidal, um, I, I always prefer it on every track that I tested from hip hop to um, folk to jazz to classical. I preferred everything in its sort of original form um, than this. I do love, as I mentioned, that it has um, a built-in uh, mini jack. It uh, future-proofs it to a certain extent. Um, obviously, it is a powered speaker, so that's going to have to continue to operate. But in terms of um, some of the things that it can send to, uh, to Bluetooth and stuff like that, I just love that whatever happens, I have the ability here to plug in um, what I want to plug in and actually make it work. The software was easy to use. Um, it's synchronized with Bluetooth extremely well. It all worked exactly the way it worked. And as I said, if we're talking about it as a Bluetooth speaker, it's great. All of these features, totally great. Google Home integration, fantastic. Absolutely set up painlessly on my Android device. Great sound, all this stuff. It's the 360 reality audio, which for me distracts from the sound. In other words, engaging this one major feature made it sound worse than I think it should. It's fun, and I guess you have um, the opportunity of experimenting. But to think of this as some sort of, you know, that that the sound is loud enough that it will fill a room, but it will always sound like it's coming from a point source. It will always sound like over here is where the speaker's coming. And no matter what kind of magic you get in terms of stuff bouncing back, either in open concept um, rooms like my kitchen or in closed rooms like this uh, home theater, it was the directionality was always there. All you got was a worse version of the of the um, the sound. So that has much more to do with one sort of relatively minor functionality about the uh, speaker, but the basis is fundamentally great. It is a very very good sounding um, Bluetooth speaker uh, in terms of the uh, the timbre. The vocals were pretty decent. Um, the drum sounded good. Uh, there was a great deal of presence. There was a great deal of oomph. Um, again, the volume goes up to more than loud enough of what you would want, except for extreme environments. I like that it can be synchronized as a whole room system. I really like their app application. I like the look. I like the feel. I like the, the textured material here. I like its, uh, its rigidity. I mean, there's a little bit of give here on the plastic, but it sort of feels like it's a big solid thing. It's essentially a monolith. You're gonna put it on your counter and actually listen to. And I love that the controls on top are very easy to use. You simply, um, even if you're, you're nowhere near your sources um, for what you're playing, you can change the volume here and you can hit play and pause. Super simple to use. So overall, I really like this speaker. I think it's actually very, very good. I'm just frustrated with one particular selling aspect that I think people might be um, buying this, expecting something that it, frankly, when that stuff uh, um, is implemented, it just simply does not deliver. Forgetting the 360 audio stuff is a straight up, essentially playback for your regular, especially for podcasts, spoken word, it's great, super clear. Um, and for music as well. And it, it, this is not gonna replace a full music system, but in terms of an addition somewhere, like, as I said, a kitchen, living room, um, somewhere where you just uh, want, want to have a bit of music to fill in some ambience. This is a fantastic, fantastic thing to look at. So there is our look at the crazy uh, fun SRS RA3000 from our friends at Sony. Um, Please let us know in the comments um, your experience with this. Um, let me know whether you felt that the 360 audio experience was quite the same as me, but uh, also what you think of the, of the sound of this unit. We would love to uh, hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, there's plenty more videos on this channel. Please subscribe, please follow and do all of that stuff, and we will see you next time. All the best. Take care.